Right, I'm down on Peg 53 now on the River Raven. And when I say on the River Raven, I mean on the River Raven. I'm over the River Raven. I'm not on the wooden platform. And the big difference I want to just explain about the Opbox, if you're not familiar with it. With the Opbox system, this is your platform. This is your seat box. That's why with an op box you don't need a platform. And because it's so rock solid, I've got the outrigger set here, which allows me to go to five feet. And there's, obviously the river here is much deeper at the, close in, so that's a big advantage. And then in order to fit the seat box, instead of just actually putting it on a platform, obviously with the op box, once it's on, you're clamping it in position. Yeah, so it's very easy. Big advantage as well, the op box is the accessories. Because we're thinking this is the way you might be fishing or out in a lake, things like the top kit set doesn't need a support leg. Likewise, side table doesn't need a support leg because you can appreciate here that's over the river. If I push that down, that's how long the support leg would have to be. Yeah, so I think now we'll get some fishing done and hopefully catch some fish. Right, I'm down on peg 53, uh, quite a nice peg, but really and truthfully, like a lot of the pegs on uh, Evesham, you just don't know how it's gonna perform on a specific, uh, on a specific day. Now, on these matches, uh, particularly qualifiers, you've got 85 pegs broke, you know, broken down into seven, eight man sections, and you can win a section with a couple of pound and you can even win uh, the match with four or five pounds. So really and truthfully, you, you just have to bring everything uh, to try and establish what's in front of you. Now, I've uh, on this, just fished the Sunday where I've, I actually managed to qualify, and I'll just talk you through basically my tactics, how I went through that day. Uh, I effectively started off and had 10 minutes just on the inside with a really fine rig. Following that, I've then gone to the 11 meter line to see what I could pick up there. And I've really struggled, and, and I've tried positive rigs on the 11 metre line, and then lighter rigs on the 11 metre line. I've then gone to my big fish line, which was a single lobworm on a size 10 uh, that put And they've all pulled in a, a few fish, but you know, you, here's where you sort of have to work out which method you want to stay with. And if it's not working, try the next one. So after that, it was onto the waggler, and I was just catching tiny, tiny fish, and with two and a half hours to go, you know, with only a pound of fish in the net, that's where you sort of then need to take a look at where you want to go. Now, the day before, uh, the section I was in had been won by one pound ten. Uh, when I say the section I was in, in, in within the, where I was that day. So on that peg, one pound ten had won. So you could say, okay, well, we'll give it another uh, couple of hours, and I might do that, but. To me, that spell, pick the feeder up, rod up, and go for a bigger fish. Uh, and that paid off, because in the, in the two and a half hours, I, I've picked up three tench, weighed in 10 pounds, uh, that's got me, uh, and that's got me my qualifying spot. Right, in terms of rig choice, I've got uh, something like a four, four by 10 float, uh, pencil float for the inside line, with just a few droppers, two thirds of the way down. Uh, size 20 gamma and I'll be fishing a tiny tip of worm or a single red maggot. 11 meter I'm, I've got two rigs I've got a one gram float and a two gram float number three elastic and again size 20 green gamma hook and then I've got from a 14 half meter I'll be put, uh, putting a dropper in with some chopped worm and I'll be going out over that probably every 25 minutes just staying on it for a minute see if I can pick anything up and that'll be a size 10 hook and a lobworm and then I'm going to have me waggler rod set up uh, to fish uh, probably caster and, and, and maggot while I'm firing uh, caster over there and what I, what I've noticed is a lot of really tiny f fish I'm hoping that just by f catapulting caster I might bring the bigger fish in and get them you know get them out of the way and then if all that fails it's the feeder and I've set up a paternoster feeder uh, and uh, I'll also have another fe a, a normal running uh, link feeder and again they're going to be set up with big fish lines size 10 hook and, and a lobworm my principle is if you're not if you're having to wait a long time for a bite you might as well wait a long time for a big fish uh, and when I'm fishing the feeder what I am going to do 
is I'm not going to just throw it in and leave it. I'm going to keep on going in every two minutes religiously putting food in. You know, uh, because I do believe that noise going in and a bit of food going in can draw in the bigger fish. So what we'll do now, I think, is if we have a close-up look at the top kit set, uh, and uh, I mentioned earlier, obviously we've got the box moved forward. Having the top kit set forward of where it would normally be if I was on here gives me advantage. My top kits can go down the river and they're getting nowhere near this undergrowth. Right, it's, uh, it's been a hard day's fishing. Every single one of the lines we've used has caught fish. Uh, we've had fish on the waggler, we've had them on the shore, we've had them on, on the 11 metre. Uh, we got done by an eel on, on our long line. Yeah, there's obviously some snags out there. Uh, obviously after the day I've had yesterday where, where I bagged up, came second overall, you know, it just does, it just think, brings you back down to earth and shows you, you've just got to be very wary when you're starting to fish one of your pegs at Evesham and just have everything in the bank and just go through all the motions and, uh, you know, uh, keep, keep a balanced approach. But the main thing is you've got to have the equipment that, uh, to do the job to go through all the setups. So until the next video, tight lines.